Welcome to the Headphone Dialogue episode 4. I'm your host Offenlicht and with me today are Matt Economist, Metal571 and Kinex to talk about budget audio gear. Being that big of a deal. Anyways, um, I, we've already talked about um, starting this episode by uh, defining what we consider to be budget um, in audio. So, um, who wants to start? Maybe. What about Kinex? Uh, uh, <laughs> so, um, I had to prepare for this episode by bringing out my Cost Porter Pro, and I think that uh, they're probably one of the um, definitions of excellent budget audio. And I think most people would agree that for the price that they're just a fantastic headphone. And I think they're, they're a great example, something that's for, for me, budget, something that you could afford. Um, everybody's budget's going to be different, but you know, usually around a hundred dollars or less, I think would probably fit a, a budget buy. Yeah. I think for me, at least budget has been almost migrating downward over time. Just as stuff that was classically sort of in the mid end is getting cheaper. Like when you can get a used HD six XX or something for like one fifty, it seems weird to say that's budget. But like a Porta Pro, that's always going to be budget. Yeah, Porta Pro KSC seventy five. It just uh, isn't. How much is Porta Pro now? Isn't it like still fifty? I think that's what I remember. They're uh, around that. You can get them for like forty, I believe. With let me check the camel, camel, camel. And they've for, been around for a long time. I mean, even. We've got the mass drop version now with Bluetooth too, which I thought is, or is, is that the mass drop version? I can't Yeah, remember. I think that's the mass drop okay. version. I haven't tried that. That's got to be, that's got to be fun. But uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of the budget stuff has actually been around for a long time too, which is an interesting point. I feel like we haven't had that many entries, say, I don't know, I mean, the last five years under a hundred bucks that have been like really stole the show. Um, so that's mm. one aspect that's a little different. I'm trying to think. I mean, Status Audio CB1 was kind of in there. That's an okay headphone. Um, I'm not the biggest fan. I actually don't mind the M40X. That's hovers right around the limit of what we want to pay here in the nine bucks. Um, but the Creative Art Mono Live is another good one that everybody seems to agree on, though. And that's been around since, like, what, the early 2000s, I think, by now, or mid-2000s, something like that. Well, if you yeah, go back to around. the origins, uh, like the D1001, that was by Denon uh, before yeah. they before they completely changed the sound of it to the D1100. Um, but, yeah, that was – so that's been around. It's had great lineage um, as other brands and also as the, as the Cal itself. So we all agree that budget is probably around the hundred dollar mark, so and below that, maybe a yeah, little bit like, above a hundred, but not not um, not like past halfway to two hundred, and not like definitely below one hundred and fifty, and mostly below one hundred is what we consider to be budget, at least for stuff with transducers, I guess. I think that's like the common, like sort of the common usage. If someone says, I want budget headphones, you're going to not see that many people saying, hey, you know, get, you know, DT 880, get an HD 600 or something. You're going to see people saying, get a Cal. Yeah. I mean, here's where it gets a little interesting because if you bring in used as an option, then you can say that there are some options just above 100 that uh, on the used market are, are really interesting. Like if, if you can find a 580, I feel like I haven't seen that many of them on eBay lately, but if you can find one, you can have that for around 100 or 120 or something like that. And so if you open up that option, you, you get some interesting, uh, get some interesting new things to look at. Some part of me always feels weird about calling something that's, I guess because in my brain, mid-fi and budget are different categories, even though they're, you know, <laughs> They're not really referenced to the same thing. One is theoretically quality, one is theoretically price. But it sort of it makes my brain throw a gear whenever I think about something on sort of the HD six hundred series and budget. Know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's funny that you bring up like the DT eight eighty because I think that maybe because we've been in the hobby for a while, but the price on them has really gotten kind of nearing budget territory. I mean, I think it's been on sale for less than one fifty a few times for yes. an excellent headphone i saw him for 120 recently i was like jesus what wow. is the modern day yeah looking at amazon like you know 
third party use is at $110 on Amazon. Sure, I'm sure HeadFi used or like um whatever the one on Reddit is the the headphone market. Um AV like Exchange. Free, AV Exchange. I'm sure you could get it for around 120, 110 there used, no problem. Yeah, it's a really good price for what you get. There's a lot of value nowadays, actually, in a lot of headphones. I think it's really something that's so nice about the time that we live in is that you can pick up something for less than a hundred dollars that you know sounds a hell of a lot but better than something similarly priced from 10 years or 20 years back even though a lot of the budget stuff that as you guys mentioned is not actually that new well it's interesting because i think a lot of budget stuff is stuff that was released along you know relatively long ago i mean i i was gonna say earlier i think maybe we should also consider that it takes time to get a budget hype going, which might be another part of it. But like a lot of it is just stuff that's been the same price since like 2005 at the latest. And so, you know, as other prices have risen, you know, it's maybe gone down a little bit, but here we are sitting around saying, man, look at those budget, you know, HD, whatever the new, uh, the new five, nine, eight is, or, you know, the five, the five, six, nine, five, five, nine. That's the close back. The uh, the five seventy nine. That Sennheiser messed with the naming a little bit. The five fifty eight is now like a five seventy nine, and the five ninety eight is like a five ninety nine, and the five eighteen is a five fifty nine. So that's a different tuning. The the lower end one. It's wait. Like, so oh, what's one. is there a five nineteen now, or is the did they just jump no. directly? Yeah, oh, they okay. went, yeah, they went right to five fifty nine. That's confused a lot of people, and rightfully so. I, I actually heard all three of those back to back. Um, and yeah, the five fifty nine sounds like a five eighteen. <laughs> it sits wow. a lot more bloated and mid bassy. It's it's a different. Why tune. do they do this with the numbers? I do not know. Don't get me started on Sennheiser's numbering. That's that's an interesting one. <laughs> I mean, I'm a German. I don't understand that, so <laughs> it's really a problem. I don't know, but you know, it's it's funny that we mentioned how like with headphones when we we're talking how a lot of them are, are classics that that we consider kind of in the budget range now. Um, when you look at in ear monitors or earbuds, anything from maybe two thousand and five, if it's even even still made anymore, it's probably not recommended because with like IEMs or or earbuds, I feel like you know budget for that changes every other every like six months. There's a new you know, twenty dollar um, in ear monitor from China that that's coming out and taking the the world by storm. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna look that up. I think that's the I think that's really the range where we're seeing the most new products. Yeah, but not a lot of the new products have any staying power. So you, you've got a lot of releases, and then maybe the first couple of weeks or even months, it's there's a lot of talk about them, and they get praise from uh, different sources. But then it just kind of you know goes away it just uh, slowly fades away and and then you know people move on to the next one there's not many um of these smaller chinese brands that have a product that actually you know stays in the top recommendations for uh the span of years you know besides old stuff like the vsonic gr7 is probably the best example for um the, an im that's like right at the limit of what's considered budget but um, it's legendary for what it is and for what it offers. Yeah, I was going to bring up the GR7. Sad that it's now being discontinued. Wait, again? Oh, really? Are no, they, they discontinuing, discontinuing all of them? Or uh, is it yeah. just another of the 07X slash no. Ruble? No, it's, it's dead. Uh, yeah, I think oh, they're, moving, they're renaming it and then putting it into a new shell. Uh, the driver. Uh, um, so but is that what I'm looking on Amazon? Is that what they're calling um, geez, the v, VS7 or something? Uh, they have one called the Aries, the V-Sonic Aries, that's got kind of like a very 1950s futuristic styled um, body shape to it. Is that what you Can we get that up on it? screen? Let me pull up, um, I'll pull up the link that I see on Amazon. They're sitting at the $200 range, so I guess they're like $190 even. No, those are not the ones. Okay. These are, I think, a separate model. Um, so uh, this is the Vitonic Aries. They're calling the new series um, uh, the VS series, hmm. and um, apparently the VS seven is the GR seven in a new shell, but it's more expensive now. 
Okay. Oh, that's a oh, I see them now. Yeah, and they come with um. That's an interesting. It's like a clear acrylic looking housing on I that. Show it on screen, I guess. Huh. So these are the VS ones at thirty dollars. VS threes probably they, they still they have those before, and now the VS seven hmm. and the VS nine. And then they're going to make a VSX, apparently, which is uh, going to be more expensive and uh, an upgrade of the GR7X. But anyways, the, the original GR7 came out in the form of an AN16 before, right? Was that the first release of that driver? Uh, no, the AN16 was a re-release. Oh, like that was a re-release. Was, uh, they, they, I remember as well because I bought like three of the things because they oh. were really good value. But... Mm. Um, the AN16 was a GR06 shell, I think, with a GR07 driver. It sounded really wow. good, and it cost like a net of 25 bucks. Wow. Yeah, that's I cannot crazy. believe they did that deal. That's crazy. But then you had, uh, you had the... So you had the GR07, which is probably like 10 years... No, it's over 10 years old, right, at this point? It's been around for a while. Um, like when I... When I was first getting into the hobby, I remember the GR7 were one of the top praised headphones that are in your in your monitors at the time. Especially the base edition, I remember was what people what I'd always wanted to hear. I never got my hands on them though. Hmm. So yeah, I, I think I, the BE was like the re-release, so it must have been even before that. Yeah, the the, the original one didn't have. There was no base edition. That I know that, but I I, I came way later. Into I came to the V Sonic way later because when I bought my first one, there already was the classic edition out, which is the re re release, I think. <laughs> so that was actually like that was after the AN16, I think, and they re released them as the classic and the base edition. That was mm, no, the classic actually came before the AN16, but then they God. did another classic, I think. <laughs> Thank God you <laughs> fixed my timeline. This it's like terrible. I can't understand it because then they added the X. And like, yeah, they they didn't really do a great job on their branding either. So can we like actually just retopic this whole t po like podcast to what are ha what's happening with names? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this, uh... We can get back to that later for sure. But anyways, the so the GR7 came out a long time ago, and uh, people loved it, and it was one of the first. Um, headphones or earphones that I personally truly enjoyed and it really showed me what sound could be like um, and that's why I kind of hold this the, the, the GR7 uh, it, it has a special place in my heart I, I say because it it's probably what got me really started in this hobby and really t got me started taking uh, make me start to take this seriously and and you know realize that you can get great sound and you don't have to pay a lot and then i was really sad when it broke two years after i bought it because the cable is kind of shit yep <laughs> <laughs> it's the common tragedy <laughs> and you know even when i bought it i read forum posts of people saying oh this is my fourth gr7 i just love these things i can't stop buying them and it's wow. like, it's just people out there that just keep buying them and they, they break and i just buy a new one well, the good thing is that a, a trend in the hobby, even for the budget headphones, has been removable cables lately. I mean, you even see it in fifteen or twenty dollar knowledge Zenith headphones, where they come with a standard like MMCX detachable cable. And since that's the most common point of failure, you could really just ride those out for many, many years. Mm, it's really incredible in that front, honestly. Like when you think about how much, uh, like just the connectors and the labor to solder for and the cables just cost. It's shocking how cheap removable cables are. Yeah, it's yeah, almost yeah. to a point where it's like you know, hey, so my my sure you know my sure whatever cable broke, I just bought a KZ you know whatever just for the cable. Have the spare earphones just in case. <laughs> it's actually, it's actually a really smart idea. Yeah, they they've been really they've been really hitting it off with the cables. I think they they re, they've released like a series of replacement cables now that they're selling a lot of, and they also got a Bluetooth cable that you you know people can use to convert their mm -hmm. replaceable cable IEMs into Bluetooth IEMs, and that's I think also selling quite well. 
Ah, so, so that's why they launched the Porta Pro X. Uh, yeah, might be. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I no, no, please, <laughs> <laughs> don't that, don't take my my joke and slander. <laughs> But this is definitely uh, is definitely uh, something people are interested in, and I get a lot of requests. Um, or there's a lot of requests um, for from people that want that are looking for a, a Bluetooth headphone um, below a hundred dollars, and I'm always kind of, you know, I always feel kind of bad because I don't really have a good answer for for them because I can't really think of a, a Bluetooth headphone below a hundred dollars that I enjoy the sound of. I might be huh. blanking. Does anybody of you? Does under anybody? Under hundred dollars. Yeah, or like uh, maybe under under half hundred and fifty. Let's say hundred fifty is like. I've, a... I've been recommending to to people like um. There's a free talk thread on uh the NFL subreddit and people just like ping me all the time whenever it was a headphone thing and I've been saying you know if you want on the go in ear monitors the Tin Audio T2 Pro seem to be the way to go and you could just get a Bluetooth cable from Knowledge Zenith and that seems to be like probably really the way to go at this point t2 pro or t2 non-pro is what you say uh aren't the the pros aren't they said to be a little bit better uh so what i've heard is i haven't heard either so this is all hearsay which is generally not a good thing but uh, i've heard from trustworthy sources such as kyle uh that the uh t2 is actually the the one that has the better tonality and a T2 oh. Pro uh, just adds a lot more uh, mid treble or lower treble, you know, to well, make it seem more detailed. I will but have to uh, change my recommendation then. This is just what I'm hearing, though. I don't. <laughs> I, I haven't actually got any experience with either of them, but I do know that the T2 is what is like the flavor of the month or of this year, 2019. Like people seem to be rec recommending that the regular T2 the most for an entry level in your monitor. But what I was thinking about was Bluetooth headphones like on ear or over ear, because a lot of people dislike the fit of in ears and prefer a normal headphone. And there's not a lot of great ones in that price range, at least. I think that if you look at like the older stuff, that some of the older uh, ANC Bluetooth headphones are pretty good deals. I, uh, I mean, you know, maybe depending on a lot of them are, you know, kind of harm and target. So if you're not into that, then that's a problem. But if you are, then there's stuff like, you know, the old JBL Everest Elite 700. That one in particular is cheap beyond reason used and uh, just in like the refurb. And there's always refurb ones on eBay. So that's usually mm. what I recommend normal people get when they ask me, what headphones should I get? Mm. How much are those? Uh, it varies. I saw one go for 50 bucks recently. What just like <laughs> refurb, and I was like, that seems unreasonably good. Didn't they start at like 300 before? Like when they, yeah, came but out? yeah, the thing is, though, I think the Bluetooth headphones have much more like the commodity electronics life cycle. They start out, you know, a few hundred bucks, but then they end up in a, like a generation or two. They yeah. end up real cheap. Seems like they also have a lot more, you know, engineered uh, obsolescence built in oftentimes. Yeah, they, they don't tend to have, like, replaceable ear pads, so you get into that problem. There's definitely some design intent. Well, it's so, kind of... Uh, what are you talking about? Um, Does that thing support? I'm curious if it's a, if it's a different generation than the current one. Hmm. Probably not the coolest, whatever yeah, the latest that's... cool codex for the cool kids I is. Yes, but for fifty bucks, wow! I mean, I would expect that to be like maybe one fifty used, but fifty, jeez, I'll have to look for that for one of those now. <laughs> hey, hey, you might like. It. Oh, have you heard it before? Yeah, I have a half broken one oh. that was like thirty bucks that we found a while ago. <laughs> So I, I know I like the kind of sound, but like I'd like one that you know is fully functioning. <laughs> yeah, well, like on the uh, on the just scrolling eBay, it's like buy it now refurb for one twenty five. Bunch of best offers that haven't been taken at like wow. maybe, you know like eighty bucks. A couple of them with minor cosmetic problems at like fifty bucks. Let's say looks yeah, like there it looks like like fifty to eighty area probably. Yeah. So realistically, that would be an option, I guess. But then you'd have uh, to. The main problem is normal people don't like used headphones. Yeah, yeah. So it's like their primary market, which is, of course, quite cheap, but it's really yeah. hard to convince people to get on board with that. Maybe that Porta Pro Bluetooth is actually the way to go because is that's probably coming at under 100 bucks, right? 
It has to be uh, right. Uh, Seventy dollars or something. I think it's like seventy nine. Will normal people wear those though? Like and they're um, open back oh, too. Yeah. That's another problem. I think, I, I think it's they're coming back though now that the retro aesthetic is in, right? That's true. There's probably lots of hits hipsters that are into the look. <laughs> it's, it's been like 80s. an 80s revival thing with the whole outrun theme and all that. Yeah, that's true. 100%. So we're talking budget, um, budget like Bluetooth right now, and some a company that have I've always kind of looked at as kind of like a pretty solid budget company with excellent customer support is ME Audio, and they have, um like their M6 or X6 Bluetooth. You can find them on Amazon for $25. They're the in-ear, like budget sport wireless things. Um, they have a few over-ear ones under $150. Um, has anybody explored any of those options? Uh, oh, the uh, I know the Matrix 2 was uh, a standard recommendation for like uh, $50 Bluetooth over ear headphones. I think that was discontinued quite a while ago, though. Oh, they yeah. have the Matrix Three um, now, and like on ME Audio's website, they are eighty dollars. Um, Amazon doesn't seem to have them though, um, but they have like a cinema that one that are like Aptex for, I guess, for watching movies, and they're a hundred dollars new on Amazon. Interestingly, like this stuff right. doesn't usually get attention, I think, in a lot of our circles. But I'm really appreciating. I mean, not so much for me, but for the general interest, how uh, ratings does a lot of reviews of that kind of stuff. They've, uh, like, it used to be, you know, if something was a Bluetooth headphone for thirty bucks, you'd never. It's not that likely to see it in Tiles database. But oh uh, yeah, you get all kinds of measurements of everything from ratings now. Yeah, that's a good point. They they buy. It's all really kinds actually of stuff, not just the popular stuff, really. And a lot of budget stuff. I think they go a lot off yeah. what's popular on Amazon, so it's a lot more representative. Yeah, I think they give you a chance to vote. Uh, each member has like one vote, and there's a whole list of headphones they're considering. And I believe they buy them in that order. But that lets the general consumers kind of decide, really. It's not just audiophiles looking at that site, I think. Which explains why they've reviewed like seven Corsair headsets. Yeah, which is really interesting because <laughs> you don't normally see gaming headsets get measured on a hat. So that's that's something what, else. Didn't After seeing some of them, gamer... I kind of wish I didn't. <laughs> um, didn't PC Gamer buy like an expensive heads like a measurement? I, thought system I saw that set. a long time ago. Yeah, I don't know what they were using though. It, it was it. like an actual forty-one twenty-eight C. It's very really? weird. They had a giant article about headsets, did a bunch of reviews with the hats, and like a full measurement stack from, I think, Listen Inc. And then I have not seen anything from them and about no one it. Whatever references that, yeah. But I feel like I have seen yeah. that. Well, here's Their formatting was terrible. <laughs> they tested uh, over 50 headphones in 2016. Um, but yeah, uh, I haven't heard anything from it. Yeah, it looks like they have uh, a, a hats. Yeah, it was. I don't understand how that made such a large splash in such a brief moment and then disappeared. Do they even still do that? Like, has has anyone seen a review from them using measurements since then? Yeah, but who yeah, buys a forty one twenty eight and then just lets it sit? <laughs> I feel I don't like know, they maybe they're really lonely and need some company. <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah. casting aspersions, Ovin? I don't know. <laughs> why? Why do you feel? Why do you feel so upset? I just, you know, I hear something pointed there. No, that's all in your head. You just project. <laughs> so, um, I'm looking at PC Gamer right now, and they have, um, they have their top gaming headsets of 2019, and none of the none of the reviews I'm looking at actually have a measurement. So they might have abandoned it. That's yeah. kind of sad. That, seems that would be like extremely sad and well, so so strange. But maybe you can get a cheap four D one twenty eight C from them. I I <laughs> have. <laughs> why would I? <laughs> Come on! Don't act like you wouldn't get another one just because <laughs> you don't could. add to the collection. I don't need three. <laughs> I say that now. Oh man. 
That's Listen, interesting. Ratings you're... recommends the Samsung U Flex as their best budget wireless headphone. Apparently, I mean, it's you got a flex. Bucks. Yeah. Is that over ear or is that an in ear? No, that's an in ear. Oh, okay. It's like an in ear with a neck band. It looks very weird. Well, that's like the new thing, right? Where it's well, or that was the new thing for a while, where it would have like a plastic neck band that sat around yeah. your neck, and then like little pods that went into your ears, so it looked like you were being mind controlled by something on your back. Hmm. Yeah, Maybe I mean, I it wasn't really a trend. It was. It, it just was the technical limitations of, you know, wireless, quote unquote, wireless in your monitors, right? I mean, maybe. I guess it's like battery space. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. That's why you put the controls and the batteries and potential microphones and stuff like that before. Control unit, like even the amplifier, maybe. Depends on the brand. But uh, now you have the AirPods, and everybody wants go to go fully wireless. <laughs> Those are like priced just outside of, well, what we've defined as budget. Yeah, no, I, don't I don't think, think most people really. think of this budget. No, I don't no, think I so. I think either. I think you know, even just looking at the memes, people know that airports are very much a, a luxury item. You know, yeah. and oftentimes people will buy it just to show that they can afford airports, which is you know something branding and you know status and all that is quite important to marketing. So you know, can't 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 really hate on it. That's why you just want to give yourself though. status audio. So oh, yeah, you've hacked the system. <laughs> that is that was very smart of them. What happened to them, anyways? Nobody's really talking about them. Anymore. I have a CB1 still that I bought a long time ago and just haven't reviewed, but I'm annoyed that the OB1 doesn't seem to exist. Yes, that's a that's a good name, but uh, that open back <laughs> version of it is um, <laughs> is no longer available on Amazon that I can find, but it was really well liked and uh, yeah. among the community, it seemed like. So I seem to remember that both of them were actually just rebrandings of a different headphone. I don't know what the OEM was, though. Yeah, I did something hear something Chinese. I hear that, no, that, okay. that they were just rebrandings and literally, you know, were the exact same headphones, but under a different name and on Amazon. So I'm checking the uh, OB one out now and they look pretty darn comfy. Like the pad around the ear cup looks kind of thick. And um, on the headband, yeah, it, it, looks, it looks like pretty darn comfy. Like you attach a mod mic to that, that looks like a really nice gamer setup. Yeah. yeah so what I got for my brother actually is a is a kind of a an older brother to that. It's from a different Chinese brand, and and that's the Taxstar HI twenty fifty. Was it? I think that's the open back one. It looks kind of like a Biodynamic. Yeah, the fake DT eight eighty. Yeah, it looks like a DJ eight eighty, and it has the the velour pads, and it's actually fairly comfortable stock for that shape of headphone. I think I paid sixty five euros or something, or sixty euros for it. The twenty fifty foam on pad. the ear pads on that, yeah. The foam on the ear pads on that one <laughs> is like someone tried to recreate foam with just the idea of what foam was, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's. So, to be fair, you are a pat fetishist, though. So I just oh, like no, to sorry. not have what feels like <laughs> sorry, plastic under my the velour. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's true. They're not they're not the best pads, but at least they're not like the cheap pleather. I hate the cheap pleather pads. I've got to agree with you. I'd rather have cheap filler pads. Yeah. Uh, what what uh metal jason what uh cheap sennheisers did you have at the time like the 500 series um I, all i remember is when i put them on the pads sounded like i was putting a diaper on my head it was <laughs> like, oh, cheap sounding material it's like it's so awful just put did, it I, on. did i have a cheap sennheiser it, i, it, I, I it, it, you might have been re like the 518 or something all i remember is like like they sounded pretty decent, but they the build quality on them felt like a twenty dollars. <laughs> was I, it? Was I, it? Do you remember if it was open back or not? They were or? open back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe it was a five fifty. Five fifty eight doesn't feel that cheap. No, nah, it wasn't a five fifty eight. Okay. I've used those, and they they don't feel that cheap. Yeah, I'm struggling to remember. So, I, I I was gonna bring up though that 418. the four 
419. The 4.40 BT is very popular on Amazon. I don't I don't think its frequency response looks great. And I think that driver, I have a 4.20S, which I believe is the same driver, uh, which I also bought out of curiosity. This happens sometimes with cheap stuff. And uh, well, it didn't sound that great to me. There was some kind of resonance going on in like the upper mids, low treble. I don't know why. Well, I mean, cheap under hundred dollar Bluetooth though from but a that's a, yeah from Sennheiser. Of- yeah, it's an interesting thing. So that's why people are looking at that a lot. I don't know how good that is, but um, that's something I wanted to bring up. I uh, remember watching Tyler's review on that, and he yeah was actually on the positive, and I think he was leaning towards being positive about it. Yeah, that's um, what I remember it too. Uh, so it, it's definitely bassy if you use it uh, on active mode. So that's something that most people will enjoy, I guess. It's not probably not very inf- offensive looking at the treble. So I guess that's yeah, an option. It's it's pretty grainy up top, or actually in the low treble. There's a strange uh, like a discontinuity almost in the graph, and that thing results in some odd sound but uh, i actually don't know if their app has an equalizer but if it does then that's that could also help hmm. but uh, also do you think that that the person that's buying a, a sub hundred dollar bluetooth headphone <laughs> would you know be that annoyed by that yeah I, I think that still sound is i think better it's a lot better than a lot of the stuff that's out there i mean tile reviewed a, another i think he he took the most popular over ear Bluetooth, and I think he reviewed that. Oh, it was the Cowan uh, E7, oh, and God. yeah, oh, the 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 frequency response was horrible. So like, <laughs> Sennheiser is really not that bad. Yeah, compared to those, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I hear that someone's around. upgraded their speakers with some new woofers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that my do- you hear my dog? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let me. I don't know how to resolve this. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. I will about step it. away for a minute. I can step away for a minute. No, no, no don't worry. No. Okay. Um, I just I was sitting on that pun for too long. Not yeah. To no. So we have a, we have uh, a poodle that that really just has vocal cords for days. Um. When it sees something outside sometimes. <laughs> and believe it or not, poodles get kind of big. Like everybody sees like a miniature poodle on this thing's now. It's like head like floor to head, it's probably about three, three and a half feet. And like standing up, it's six foot. It's just such oh, a ridiculous. Man. Yeah. That's a big man. Dog. I hate admitting this, but a poodle bullied the shit out of me when I was a kid. It was like a <laughs> full size poodle. And that's sh- when I was 10, that shit was the terror of my neighborhood. <laughs> 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 I was gonna say, didn't everybody bully you when you were a kid? But that's wow, maybe a little, maybe a little harsh. That's Just so harsh. So, um, back to the, back to like uh, somebody brought. It's a good thing somebody brought Taxstar because they had some big hits within like the budget range. And uh, another company that seems to have fallen by the wayside now, but I think most of us have had have at least at least listened to one of their headphones are the uh, the Superlux brand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. I always think of them as being yeah, tax star. The yeah, no. they, they <laughs> had a few headphones. I'm looking at like the 668B, which were kind of like a warm signature, kind of reminded me of um, uh, what, the K240s or something kind really? of. Yeah, I, th- I think well, the 668B super warm. is, yeah, I was going to say, I, th- I think it's supposed to be modeled after a DT990. <laughs> so I don't no, know no, no, no. You might be thinking. No, you think about the Evo. The other one? The 680 Six eight one is definitely treble spiky. I never heard the yeah. six. Six eight one is brighter than a six six eight, but they're both got not like little treble. I'd say not inoffensive. Yeah, it's it's a little bit much, but it. Just, I think the frequency of the peak wasn't that high, so strangely no, it didn't no, no. bug me too much. I think the six sixty eight B's got that that bass bump though. Yeah, that was one of the big differences. I mean, look at these though for. I'm looking at a used pair right now for $29, brand new $39. I mean, I remember I actually really enjoyed my time with the 668B. Um, I didn't hear the 6881, but I did hear um, the 681 Evo, which were the closed back. And for, for the price, I mean, that was the, the, the comfort was probably the biggest issue I had with them. Other than that, they were pretty solid headphones yeah those were like 30 bucks for the longest time i think to jump into that yeah it was crazy it's like i mean if you're talking like really budget sub 50 dollars, i don't know if there's a better full-sized open back headphone than 
than the 668. I, I think they're, they're, I think them and the Sam's and SR850, which um, were also kind of like modeled after like a K240. I, I think, think the, those. I think the SR850 is based on the Superlux design, if I remember right. Yeah, it's yeah, probably the same OEM. Yeah. But the Superlux is based on the K240, so it goes full circle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's aesthetically the K240, but yeah, like, but, uh, what was it actually? The the voicing is quite different, isn't it? I I, mean, I, seem really to remember the, I seem to remember the measurements being like super flat, you know, compensated. Oh, rating says six sixty eight BFR. Let's see. So yeah. I'm looking at like uh, oh, right. older ears, and they look like a, like compared to their. I think they use Harman as their. their it's. Base. It's they sort of use harm. something that's like Harmon but worse. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it shows it shows a, a boosted base, but I mean, up to about five k, it seems to follow Harmon pretty well. Their version of Harmon. Uh, I guess. I guess from one k to five k, it follows Harmon. Other than that, it's then like, it gets kind uh, of. And the six six eight was um, tile measured. It looked pretty flat on ID comp too, except for the treble. And, well, it looked pretty flat in the mids, um, which probably mm. means it's a little bit down tilted, I would think. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the measurements that Tyler did as well. I mean, for forty dollars for a full sized, I think the biggest drawback you're running into is really the, the distortion's pretty high on them. But um, I, th I think you're really running into just the the pad, the comfort on them suck. They they took like this Audio Technica wing design and. Let me tell you something. Those pads, for one, they were they were they were they wouldn't move very much. And then the pads, they look like they're they're maybe plush or something, but they're not. It's just like hard foam. So I'm nit I'm, nit I'm definitely nitpicking here, but I I I only briefly listened to the six eight one, and I just seem to remember it sounding a little bit dry, and the treble timbre especially not sounding the nat the most natural. Oh yeah. Um, which is which is you know it's a cheap headphone, but I personally definitely take something like the KC seventy five, which is not a full size over ear headphone, but it sounds to me a lot better for a similar price. I think I'd say the KC seventy five has more even treble, but they both have kind of problematic treble. It is, but the overall, the KC seventy five sounds to me more tonally and you know timbre wise more correct. It sounds I can more, see that. more yeah, like music. Sounds strange, yeah. So I'm just gonna pull aggro from uh, from Jason here and say <laughs> that we probably shouldn't talk about budget headphones without at least giving some credence to his least favorite one. Uh -uh. Um, that being, you know, the MDR V6 slash seven. Oh, I don't like that either. No, nobody. Uh, should no, have, nobody. Should have <laughs> double aggro. No, we, we, we need to discuss that though. Uh, we need I, to discuss that because it's, it's recommended by so many gone. people. So. Yeah, well, it's true. people are like other oh, studio monitors. That means they're this, that. No, that the studio monitor doesn't mean anything but like closed back for for monitoring tracking. It yeah, doesn't mean that they're using that to to um, mix a mix a right. recording or anything. It just means that they were cheap, they were built well, and they had good isolation. Now, to be to 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 further, you know, poke the bear, I will point out that pretty much every time they've been like blind preference tested, like Olive has had them score pretty high twice. People do seem to like them, but I do actually share the perspective that I found them surprisingly unappealing the times that I've listened to them. Yeah, I've always tried to reconcile that. The trouble so, is, I did it in for me every time. It just yeah. sounded so awful and. <laughs> And it just—I don't know—very splashy. Like you hear a symbol, it's, like it's there's no enormous, detail. It's just like, psh. yeah, it's enormously grainy. Like I feel like I don't know. I, I'm not sure how it ends up scoring so highly all the time. I don't know if people just like the like the tuning because it it just sounds really raw and like, but it, it's also very grainy at the same time. But I don't know. Maybe people like the exciting sound. But if you don't crank it too high, like I can listen to it, but not for like a long period. <laughs> All right. So you're looking at THD on the V6, 10 percent um, up until like maybe forty or something. Oh wow. like. And at a hundred, it's still over one percent. It's like maybe four or five percent. Well, like, yeah, but like low frequency. And that's at ninety. THD, by the way, very. 
at the very poorly. Not even at 100. 100, it's like 10%. That's like nobody <laughs> goes at 100, obviously, but like that's crazy. Yeah, like, but like, I mean, like, like DX as an example, because that's like probably the closest competitor that it's really got. If you were looking at the what? Like the M50 or M50X. Oh. I think that's well, probably. Yeah, well, what about the cow? So the yeah, distortion. Let's go bring up the cow. All right, the cow does not have isolation though. That's basically like you wouldn't if, if well, you what were, I was gonna say is it has about it has pretty comparable distortion. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not very good either in distortion. The thing about I feel but, like the thing like, about distortion is if you don't really crank it, it may or may not affect you as much. <laughs> if you want to do huge bass boosts or like giant volume, you're gonna have a problem, but <laughs> Also, yeah, and I'm yeah. really skeptical of lo particularly low frequency THD as a measure of quality. Yeah, like so, every time that gets tested, it's really hard to hear. It just sounds like power handling to me when I have always correlated it. I, I don't hear THD too well other than the bass. And what happens is if you try, because I, of course, because I play with EQ so much, but if you try to boost. Like HD six hundred is a great example. If you try to boost the sub bass on that thing really high, it just it falls apart, and all the boost goes shifting up in the harmonics towards other parts of the bass because it just it just can't handle it. Horrifyingly, so this applies to me. You're actually hitting the linearity limits of the driver, which really <laughs> I've got to say I'm actually frightened. Well, you don't know about the middle bass boost. Oh no! <laughs> Wait until he. You know, he shows you some actual planar compression. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Oh my god! <laughs> this is why can I'm we scared not, that he can we not that. that meme? <laughs> anyway, well, uh, so going going back to the cow. So I actually brought out the cow for today's episode. Uh, I hadn't I hadn't listened to it's, it for a while. The open edition. It's and, so you can get it now on Amazon, ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah, it actually gets more expensive after I wear it. You know, just I don't know. Just <laughs> Um, either way, so this is, um, right now it's probably the most popular recommendation from our server. You know, when people come in and want an entry level headphone, you know, whether it's open back or closed back, the recommendation is oftentimes the creative or one or life and the first version at that, because apparently they fucked up the second version for some reason, even though it's, is it the same driver more or less? Uh, I don't think it is the same driver. Uh, it's a similar driver, be, though, right? It's it's quite it's definitely it's they're both biocellulose. They might actually be the same. It I says the same forty millimeter same. biocellulose, and that's like a Fostex. Like, oh, oh, yeah, they're, they're all Fostex for sure. They're they're basically, Fostex. the the two is pretty similar to the D eleven hundred. Um, oh, is that what it is? Okay, so it's a it's a bassy kind of. It is, yeah. It's yeah, it's very way too big. big. So and 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 the the cowl actually doesn't measure that basically, but I think it sounds more bassy because of the distortion. I, it's like just my my guess because listening to it right now, it sounds quite bassy. Wow, the cowl too has pretty interesting measurements. I'm going to link that. That's... Interesting is a is a way of putting it. <laughs> you can uh, you can put a, order them. I want I I might order these right now to do a really a, yeah. It might be interesting. second one. I've never heard it, so that would be interesting. I've yeah, heard it guys can quite hear. a bit. Uh, Look at that 300 hertz, has... response, 300 hertz square wave response. That's kind of... Well, that's just the result of the like the recessed upper mids because Tile doesn't compensate his... He doesn't have any inverse filter for his square waves. Uh, so the closer something is to being flat on the hats and the raws in a given band, the more flat its square wave will be. So the, the left side does show consistently more THD in the base, though. So. I, and well, I'm looking at the THD as well on this. It, I've, I don't like pour over measurements, but I can't recall seeing a headphone where the THD started higher, went down, and then went right back up again. Like, uh, uh, well, that's probably no, well. You mean the 90 decibel plot? Hold on, a yeah, I'm gonna yeah. pull this up. Yeah. Isn't that a limitation of oh, yeah, tiles that. rig a little bit with the THD? Uh, well, that's basically your classic noise dominated response. The really key thing to note is that you see how around the ear resonance around like, you know, three kilohertz, four kilohertz that, oh no, we're, we're recurring. Um, but yeah, around three, four kilohertz area, you know, two, three, it starts to dip in a shape. That's basically the inverse of the raw response. That's how you know that there's likely to, it's likely that that's environmental noise. Okay. 
Okay. So a faulty measurement is well. well I mean, it's well, no, it's, it's signal to noise, right? Yeah, basically. So yeah, anytime does, that the yeah. THD curve looks like the inverse of the raw response, it's very likely to be noise dominated. Okay. Yeah, but like the left side, side and the left the oh, the left side and the right side measurements are quite different, especially in the mids. And the, it looks uh, like one of them did, didn't consistently couple, though. Like if yeah, you look at the, like that, or there was just channel imbalance. But if yeah, you look yeah. at the roll off and the raws, it's I think so it does. Yeah. I think it does look like coupling issues. Yeah. By I the way, I like surprised. we're seeing all your bookmarks right now. <laughs> yeah, it's great, right? I don't know. If that's I like the hip hop and R and B one. I, I like R slash uh, bombing. What's R slash bombing? You want to see that? No, <laughs> no, no. Actually, don't get us pulled. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's literally just oh, spray, okay. spraying. Oh, 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 it's vandalism. <laughs> it's you know, it's art. You know, this is art. Vandal art. <laughs> okay. I only behold. The hands the I only behold. Anyways. Anyways, it's nothing to do with terrorism, guys. Calm well, down. So, okay, so we were okay. talking about the, we were talking about the um, to get off the to get off yeah. the terrorism to T um, word to get away from the T word. <laughs> so we were talking about how the cow were very recommended, and there's another one that I know me and me and Jason definitely love. That that was a budget, you budget oriented price in terms of price, but like the the audio is. Is outstanding for the price, and that's the A nine hundred X by Audio Technica. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think I think most people who've heard that would say that that was a, a very, a very it's just enjoyable, great, very yeah. enjoyable price to quality ratio of of everything you get. But the biggest issue is hands down the 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 fit for some people. But fortunately, and this is my biggest gripe, I'm going to get on a slight Audio Technica tangent for half a second. Um, they they put the best gimbal, the head foot ear, ear cup gimbal assembly on the A900X. It had horizontal and vertical adjustment. They didn't put that in the W5000. They didn't put that in the W1000X. They didn't put that in the one, W1000Z. Um, the yeah. biggest issue is like the, the fit and you're, you're not going to give it more adjustment. Anyway, the A900X, um, I still haven't heard the A9, A990Z. Yeah, um, that's the new but, one. I'd like to get my hands on that, but that's now you're pushing like 200 mm. plus. Yeah, and, uh, I, thought those, I thought the I was gonna say one of the one of the things about I'm sorry, I'll just let you get back in a second. But um, one of the problems with the A900X, well, one obviously it's discontinued, but two, like what price do we like it at? Because I think originally it was 300, <laughs> but like when I saw it, it was like a hundred dollars that I can get behind. I, yeah. I found it, I, I paid, I think I paid 149 in 2015 for it, and I think that's not that far off. Maybe a hundred bucks yeah. is more fair, but 149 no, is not out fair. of the question. Yeah, wasn't yours yeah. the broken one though? <laughs> What? Oh, oh yeah, here's the one channel I I really still don't know if if all of them have a slight channel imbalance or if it's just my pair. I even had it like I even sent it in for warranty just to see what they would do, and they said, "Nah, it's fine." <laughs> of course, just, I don't know what's up with that. It just matches your ears. It's been molded to you <laughs> by now. Yeah, right. Uh, I actually sold it once, and then the guy decided that. He was going to sell his collection, so I bought it back. And now I don't think I'm going to let go of it anymore because it is a really, I don't know, I like to call it a special sauce kind of a sound. It's a, it's a very interesting headphone to listen to. Interestingly enough, it actually measures somewhat like the Atticus when I looked at it now. It's a little bit like that. So it kind of makes some sense since I like that headphone well, as well. If you, if you compare <laughs> measurements, the MDRZ1R measures somewhat like the Atticus as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point yeah depends on your perspective yeah i've never tried equalizing a z1r i'm not sure if i want to but <laughs> I, think, I think i heard the z1r i think that was that was that what i had jason the z1r over here i don't remember if we ever heard that did we z1r is the big sony it's a big oh, the cup it's with really the nsfw like cups what's the what's this what's like the 200 dollars close back that uh, um, are you are you thinking of the MDR one A maybe? Yeah. Oh, you had the one R. I think it's the MDR one R. Yeah, you had the one R. Yeah, the one A is a lot better, I think. But I don't the one A is a lot better. 
then that's pretty sad. How bad must the one R be in that? No, case? I had the one A. I had the one A because had the darker gray coloring. I remember you had the one R when I tried it at your place, mm. <laughs> and it was I'll just it was just play. warm. It it didn't have a lot of bass. Well, I don't know. It was think, a weird headphone. Yeah, it was bizarre. The 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 one A that I briefly heard was quite W shaped, and I didn't I didn't enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's um, W shaped. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it it also uh, emphasizes like the upper part of the mids, kind of. I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of like it it the mids are like a hump, so it, the mids are rolled off, and the lower and the upper mids, and like the mid mids are elevated. Mid, mid range extension, right? It's so weird. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't sound right. I didn't I didn't enjoy it. I did I did listen to the nine hundred X and the nine ninety uh, in Japan as well. And uh, I think the 990Z sounded just a little bit more V-shaped than the 900X. Oh, interesting. I heard huh. it was just warmer. And I think the only difference is mainly just caused by the pads. It's maybe not more V-shaped, but I thought that the, the treble peak was more pronounced in the yeah, uh, huh. 990Z. Because, might be because the rest of the treble is a little more lower in level so that the, the peak is more emphasized. Oh, it but, stands out more, yeah. But either way, I did. I did I was, I'm quite... Um, sensitive to that 9k region i think because uh the, the, the that was the main reason that i didn't enjoy the mdr z1r is because the treble sounded so fucking annoying and bad to me <laughs> because it, it was like it was nothing like there's nothing at 6k or whatever and then it just there's a yeah, huge yeah. huge mountain at 9k and it just didn't sound right to me yeah, and you have, yeah, you have yeah. the same problem with that. You do have that a little bit in the in the in the nine hundred X and the nine ninety Z, but it's nowhere near as bad. And the mids are way more even in both of them compared to the Z one R. So that there's actually like a decent warmish mid tonality in so, the nine hundred X. Yeah. I'm going to keep us slightly off topic, but I have a question for the long-term A900X owners here. <laughs> I just remembered I had a 990Z on hand and did actually measure it against the A900X. Oh. Um, I don't know how I forgot about this, actually, but um, I ultimately concluded that I couldn't really reliably characterize what differed between them because they were so inconsistent in their fit on the hats that there was that there were frequency <laughs> response variations yeah. on either side with both. Do you guys find that you notice that subjectively? Oh, one hundred percent, and that's why I've always said that any Audio Technica wing design, take the measurements with a grain of salt. You're never getting a reliable measurement on there. All of tills tiles um, measurements on them, just kind of disregard them. To be honest. Uh, they've never sounded you that's the one thing with audio technica like you'll hear from objective objectivists and subjectivists it's that uh they don't sound like they measure and i i it's why i don't care about measurements for audio technica the wing design ones it's 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 a fruitless effort it's especially bad i think with the ones that are missing the uh what is it the vertical hinge yeah that one Oh man, you, you're you're preaching to the choir here, Keenex, because I actually have an A1000Z in house now that somebody sent me that they want reviewed, and oh man, I was just playing with that last night and the A900X, and the fit is so annoying without that that hinge. I don't understand Ooh. why they keep removing it. But then it's, you have to bend the they, people yeah, like, and I don't want to do that. Or... Cause that's not yeah, even mine. It feels I, like it's gonna break, even though I don't think it does. It it does. It feels like you're gonna break it. Like I had the W five thousands, yeah. and I bent them to the limit where I felt comfortable. And <laughs> man, I don't know. It, it, I don't want to break a five hundred dollar headphone. That's not what I want to do. Yeah, I didn't even know you had the W five thousand. That's wild. And well, what I what I might do is find a supply of like a nine hundred X, just the just the the headband assembly and buy a W5000 again and just put the ear cups on that. <laughs> That's actually a really good idea. I didn't, I didn't See, even know that. It's the only thing that makes sense for Audio Technica. I love the company. Um, there's a reason why my flare on R slash headphones is what it is. And there's a reason why, like, one time I owned 25 different Audio Technica headphones. Um, <laughs> but I will never, never, never buy one without like uh without the full adjustment again i just won't do it 
I'll never forget the AD 1000 that we tried. Oh, that was God. so weird. That was like a really um, grainy K701. I, I would say even if you could get them in a budget range under a hundred dollars, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, don't bother. They were but, they were awful. Uh, anyway, yeah, I really really want to try the 990Z because you know it's newer, but I don't. I think the E900X was I looking. I was looking on eBay actually. I think earlier today and and the regular A900. Somebody was selling for like ninety bucks, and I'm like, "Wow! If I didn't already have so, one of these, that was that's pretty really good." This so might you can be find them. This might be controversial with especially Kinex, but I think I uh, so I haven't tried them side by side, but I think sound wise, I do prefer the uh, Creative R1 and Life over the A900X. Oh, I can I understand that. that. Controversial. I, I can see that though. Honestly, so, yeah, I can understand that. I have both also. And uh yeah, I mean the A900X is not it's definitely not the kind of headphone you buy for perfect accuracy and like amazing detail and like massive sound stage. I don't even think it has any of those things. It's just got a really fun tuning that's really unique that isn't awful. <laughs> it's got, it's it's got something that like there's something about it that always drew me into it, um, especially in the vocal range and like it's the, really the warm like, in the mids. It's just got this really gooey, like warm mid tone. It's yeah. not like so pushed back that it's inaudible. That's yeah. like what I can see is like the vocal part. So yeah. if I if I were to say one thing that I try in the enamored X is the vocals. It's probably that I I think that they're a little nicer, even though they're not. They're not totally more correct. They might be even more colored in the A900X than in the Cal. Yeah. But um, to me, they sound nicer. They sound more the you know, Cal warm is a, and live. Yeah, the Cal is somewhat aggressive, honestly. Uh, yeah, it's but a little thin, too, sometimes. It, it, it is a little bit. It's got a really long bass, uh, I guess, reverse bass extension. <laughs> what is this term? Um, yeah, bass <laughs> bleed into the low mids. Reverse, reverse bass extension. <laughs> I think I invented a new term. <laughs> you just which nobody could mind. ever use. <laughs> Between this one and mids extension, we're getting like really well <laughs> characterized in how things extend. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Do, do buyers have reverse treble spike extension? <laughs> <laughs> it just extends downwards. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. It rolls <laughs> off upwards, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse roll. Off. Oh god. Exactly. <laughs> Let's not keep this going. That's awful. So the if if the DT eight eighty are have revert no, well, I guess the DT nine ninety were the worst offenders that I had heard. Um so if they have what did you say, reverse trouble ex extension? Reverse <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so the HD 650 have, where, where, where are we talking? Inverse about? treble extension. Inverse, okay. Yeah. <laughs> meet, meet in the middle and you're, you're, you're doing I'm just, that. I'm just glad we established that. So now we can yeah. move on to something. Now all the viewers know exactly what we mean with the reverse terms. Yeah. It's about exactly. as, uh, it's about as it is easy to understand as a uh, Sennheiser's model liner. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on. Give us some credit. Yeah, you're but, right. It's not that bad. Anyway, I did want to comment on the on the treble though with the A900X. I definitely noticed the 9K or 10K peak too, and Phoenix is not going to like this, but I also EQ that thing out by like three or four dB. <laughs> you know, you might actually fix it if you EQ up the rest of the treble. So it does... yeah, that you could try that too. That's just because that's know. that's what I think is is causing me to dislike the Utopia so much. Is to... Or not really? disliking it so much, but the treble part sometimes. I thought you know I have the exact thing. same thing. Well, what? good thing that the Utopia isn't budget though. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it should be. It no. should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Utopia should not be any more than one hundred and fifty bucks. I mean, it did I, score I, below I the MDR V six and Sean all listening <laughs> tests. So. Oh, that's all we need to hear. <laughs> exactly, it's it's now being downgraded to fifty dollars to compete. Wow! But does it make it budget though? Hmm, that's a good question. Well, people wouldn't be mad if you plugged it into a tube amp on our headphones, so probably not. Oh, I think we could do a whole episode on what something should cost. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh. but I don't think we we we're making any we would make any friends with that episode. That's a that's no. a good way to get like down. How much? To, how yeah, much? Do you think, 
How much do you think the Talos three should cost? Well, well so he, here's, here's the thing: about three fifty. You know, downvoted if you confirmed what other people want to hear, or, or, or disconfirmed. Yeah, but what hear. yeah, yeah. I don't think we're going to confirm much, though. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what about the uh, HD six sixty S? Just kidding. Uh, oh, no. oh. <laughs> I, I actually you... forgot about that for a second. I forgot. Yeah, now you find any of it again? Fuck, fucking hell. <laughs> All right, so um, so for for budget headphones, like what what got you guys into this this kind of hobby? Because I, I imagine we all started off with something that was kind something of budget, budget. oriented. Yeah. And for for me, um, believe it or not, the Apple dual driver IEMs were what got me into really good quality. And you know, it's crazy. I had over time and time again, like thought like, man, they were really good, nice, warm, but slightly neutral sounding headphones. And time and like I, I found other reviews that kind of backed me up as not being crazy. Um, so them and the AD seven hundred, the original purple and champagne colored Audio Technica were my the damn the edition damn colors. They were so bold with those colors, though. I wish they could rediscover that boldness. Oh, uh, please, please! I, I like the green. Uh, I like the green. Yeah, just Maybe like one. go crazy with it. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's funny that you mentioned the dual driver Apple one because I almost bought one used in Japan because it was so cheap and I did listen to it and it's it did sound quite nice and I can understand why, you know, it got you into this. And, um, it, you know, it's, it's really weird that back then Apple actually offered one of the better entry level in your monitors, you know, and that last, it was actually one of the better ones. They were eighty dollars, and they had like a little. And and from what I understand, they for mainstream, they were definitely the first dual driver. And there might have been like, like, like other companies like Shure or back then, like Hi-Fi Men. I don't know if they really even had expensive IEMs at the time. J H Harvey or J Harvey was probably like one, but they were crazy customs. But um, they had a nice, warm, clear sound to them. It's something they did really well. I don't know if I would go to as far as to say that they are clear, but um, I can. Well, to 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 ten to twenty year old me, ten eleven years ago, um, <laughs> they were clear. <laughs> ten year yeah. old Mark. It's they're definitely like I think it's a old setup dual BA, uh, and um, I think it was like a pre built old dual dual driver setup that they just put into a shell with maybe minimal tuning. But I think it's mostly actually like pre-built stuff. It was one of the earlier dual driver ones for sure, and it didn't sound bad for the price at all. So for me, I think, as I said, I started with probably the the GR7 is actually probably my first really nice one, but I did have a, a number of cheaper uh, Chinese IEMs before that, um, and you know, until I did end up with the GR7, which was probably the first one that I was that actually convinced me. To spend more stuff, more money on this hobby, and then I I I have a I have an HD five nine eight with me, and I have a T fifty RP Mark three still here, which are kind of more or less budget, but um the five nine eight I did like it was warm, but the travel was not that great, and the bass was not that great, the mids were decent I guess, and the T fifty RP I kind of bought to play with play around with, and Matt knows about that. Did, uh, mm -hmm. I think that was like one of the first correspondences uh, yep. talking about that headphone and I did some janky ass modding with it and I think it sounds really bassy now I haven't listened to it in a while but yeah <laughs> so that's I did end up with, I, I did end up having a lot of headphones and I probably should sell a lot more of them but that's, that's one of the pitfalls that can happen with budget audio so you just end up with a lot of different fairly cheapish headphones instead of one yeah. <laughs> they're almost not worth yeah. selling at a certain point yeah it's weird it's, so it's it's also so annoying to sell them because you know you gotta get like not a lot of money especially you know in relationship to the shipping costs and you just have to deal with people you know which yeah. is hard as it is <laughs> <laughs> wow so my first i think my first headphone actually something we talked about before it was the uh cal so that I was your between, first headphone. Yeah, well, like your my very first. first. Wow. Not like my first. My first is like some headset that my parents oh, okay. got me when I was a child. But like the first headphone that I I was like, hey, I need to acquire a headphone. I got a Cal. I was right. like, this sounds real good. Fun, <laughs> uh, 
then in my eternal wisdom, I acquired a DT-990. Um, and everything changed when the Treble Nation attacked. It was a formative moment for me, but I think that, you know... <laughs> did you did you buy that blind, that 990? Yeah, basically. Oh, okay. I, I'll still go to bat for the 990, but I know that I'm, like, in a very small minority. The DT-990, you said? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, no, no. Yeah, I know. I know. It's not It's not a popular, you know, th they hated how I, him because how he's always the truth. remove somebody's voice comment? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe lots of alcohol. <laughs> just just pay the guy who's editing this like $5 and he'll remove this whole exchange. We yeah. all owe that much now. To be fair, he doesn't need $5. He just needs enough for a beer. Ugh. <laughs> But yeah, right. so, so you know, I think you know, ignoring that, we got a, like a decent pedigree here. You know, I got GRO seven, got a cow. Yeah, we got kind of well, lucky on the start. How, how, let me ask you a question: How did you uh, how did you decide on getting the cow? Because I don't think that's a very you know, I read Keenex's. I like yeah. I, I'm I'm dating myself here, but I saw a post from Keenex on HeadFi about it. About wow. the what? About really? what? About I think the the Denon or the Cal or something. There was an editor. Somebody said this is the Cal now, and I was like, "All right, that sounds good." This this head fine man seems to know things. <laughs> that's the problem. I, I apologize. <laughs> I mean, that's like I, I, that's... Did, I did love the D one thousand and one though. Like that that was something that I at the time I had the the HD five five um, five at the time in my possession, and I had the uh, which which kind of dates i guess but like they didn't i don't know they, they that was back to when they were gray at the time and uh so the 555 is the d1001s and 8700 and the d1001 denons were just like something special at the time so throwback yeah so, so uh what about what about you jason what started you off oh boy um <laughs> actually what 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 tip what what made me start the hobby well i've always been i grew up with pretty frugal uh parents actually and so most of my life i've always wanted like oh can i get a better like earbud can i get a better like i am but i never really did because uh i didn't really have money anyway <laughs> and then finally when i think around grad school hit for me that was i think i started somewhere around 2014 i was like i i heard one of my lab mates M50Xs. I, I, no, actually, it was original M50 with a straight cable. That's what it was. And he claimed they were like burned in because they'd been listened to for so long already and the pads were like cracking. <laughs> but anyway, it sounded amazing to me at the time, which is pretty comical looking at that now. It's also possible the original M50 was better than the M50X, but that's a whole other conversation. And I need to buy one to figure that out eventually. But. Um, that's what sparked me uh, getting into this, and I think the first thing I bought was actually an MDR V6 because I looked at because <laughs> I looked at tiles Fuck measurements you. and I saw a flat line. And I'm like, yeah, there it is, neutral. <laughs> you can't make that <laughs> up, man. Not knowing, not knowing what ID even was, um, so that was entertaining. And then I tried to convince myself that that was correct, and all my other headphones were like wrong and. And then I went. Then it got. Then it got ridiculous. But I think the other things I bought around that time, there was uh, the first headphone I really liked, and this is this is probably gonna disqualify me as a reviewer. Was the uh, HD 280 Pro? Believe oh, it or yeah. not, no. Because I was gonna mention that one. You're and that's done, because bro. it was. <laughs> they suck. I'm sorry. It was they were so like... much warmer than yeah. the V6, and that 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 was the only thing I wanted out of it. So all right, I'm that dead because so I like warmer. the 990. You you're dead because you like the 280. <laughs> now we just need for like Mark to say that he was absolutely in love with the AD 1000, and then Ofen no, to make some sort I, of I, effort no, for no, it, no, and no, then no, we no, can no, just no. go off the air. What what did you say? <laughs> let, let, let me give you. I've got that. something way worse than what you. No, well, Go well so the, the AD700 were the headphone that I really had had wanted from the get-go, but at the at the time the price fluctuated on Audio Technica. Like every every week you'd see eighty dollars or one hundred and forty or one hundred and twenty. the The price changed constantly depending on like who was importing them to Amazon or whatnot. So really, I guess my first love was the SR80i by Grado. No. 
Oh, there it so, is. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. But you don't like your no, I still now. have a fond feeling for those, by the way. I don't know why why you forgot it, Matt, but you do know that I bought HD seven hundreds. <laughs> oh, that's you know what? Well, but did you like them? I initially I did when I first okay, auditioned. Well, no, we're done. Close the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they well, they sounded they sounded budget too. So they sounded they sounded uh, they sounded when I first listened to them, that was a long time ago. They sounded quite similar to the HD eight hundred to me. Hum. Yeah. That's uh Oh, makes you think, uh, but it, 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 and it, and I think it's because I only listen to stuff like, oh, does it have a lot of treble? Oh, it does. Does it have a wide sound stage? Yes, it does. Does it have a huge fat ass uh, <laughs> mid bass hum? Yes, it does. Well, it's basically the HD eight hundred, right? So that's 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 how I ended up with an HD seven hundred, mostly because I did like the sound stage. I don't know. And uh, going back to it, uh, going back to it, I, I don't really like to comment about soundstage these days because uh, I have a tough time actually comparing sound stages between headphones. It's it's so hard. HRTF. That's always been the hardest part of doing a review. It's I have to break out my my soundstage test tracks specifically and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, listening to instrument positions and width and. It takes much more time for me to complete that part of any review as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I ended up like looking through tracks and just like finding some tracks where I, like I know these tracks so much that you know I can in relation yeah. kind of guess. But there's so many different things like where like sometimes people mistake panning for soundstage, and you know there's stuff like reverb and and other filters that it's, you can add to make yeah. stuff sound wider than it actually is. It's you hard. Know. It's hard to choose good tracks for that. I mean, I, 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 I thankfully have the HD 800, and I kind of can weed out the tracks that don't actually have <laughs> a good sound stage, and some that do. And then I can have a point of reference. That's why I have the HD 800 at all. For those who don't know, I just keep it because it's a sound stage reference. It's so well, wide and you can give that so. to me. I've I'll, I'll take you really mine. you really liked mine yeah i remember that <laughs> yeah they they grew on me um i really enjoyed them yeah i'm gonna buy some hd 800 sooner or later i know that like the hd 800 here i know we're completely off topic here yeah, but yeah, gotta give it to sennheiser for having the the most proclivity for making people rebuy headphones the 800 and the 600 are the two most oh, rebought yeah, headphones i know of yeah let's let's be real the hd 800 is the is the best budget flagship <laughs> <laughs> well well why 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 the laps actually if you think about it um um you can get them for under a thousand dollars used you're they're gonna have some paint oh, well under yeah the painting, the painting sucks on them but i mean let's be honest here um outside of the pads being an arm and a leg to to replace there unless you get chinese um, pads uh, no, don't I, do that. <laughs> wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Just I, I'm not. I've never even tried anything, but those pads seem to be the for a reason. And um, yeah, the HD 800. Uh, most people could buy those and just be done for. Well, most people could buy the HD 600 and be done for the rest of their life. But the HD 800, come on now. Come it on. is. I mean, it's a very good head. Yeah. So are, are we, are we giving it the budget headphone award for this for this that, podcast? That, that's the budget budget the flagships. Yeah. Budget <laughs> flagship. <laughs> The budget budget action award. THD's nomination for budget headphone of the year, <laughs> HD 800. Yeah, of the year 2019. Even though oh, it's yeah, not even made anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why it's budget now. It won't that, be around long. True. They're going to get that's scarce. True. Buy them now while they're cheap. Yeah, buy yeah. them now. Wait, are, are they really discontinued? You like, can't buy yes. them? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. But they have so much stock. They're sitting on so much stock. I can tell you that... Uh, in good in good faith because i know somebody that, that you know that i talked to somebody that you know works in retail for sennheiser and they they he told me if i wanted an h800 now he, he can give me a truckload full of them so wow oh wow why didn't you say yes <laughs> because i'd have to pay for them you know it wasn't free <laughs> well you didn't mention that <laughs> i thought it was I gonna will... fall off the back of the truck I will give five hundred dollars right now for a brand new HD hundred. No questions asked. Oh yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, also same. 
Give me three. I buy three for 500 a piece. Easy. Yeah, you guys got the good deal. I bought mine new, but it was about as cheap as it got, I think, on Amazon. I think it was like it was like 975 or something. It was really cheap. Yeah, it was for like new. Low. Yeah. So so joke we were joking about like an award for for budget. Like what what would be um your your guys' recommendations for an in-ear monitor, a closed back, and an open back for getting into budget under a hundred dollars. Real real closed back or just nominal closed back? Uh, real, real, real <laughs> closed I'm gonna count back. the cow. Because oh, the, the, the cow the cow have to be kind of counted in can can the cow it, be my open back then? They they can be. Yeah, that that's works. fine. Yeah, that's completely fine. Oh. Let's think. So so, so for under a hundred, um, for for closed back, if you could find a use a nine hundred X and so we're counting use then. Are, are, are we not? Are we not counting? I think that I think a hard mode is because if we count used, you can be like, oh, get you yeah. know, get a used a nine hundred yes, get a, get a five eighty for like a hundred <laughs> Yeah, five eighty or yeah, so, I don't think that's also used IEMs are gross. Change my mind. Oh, that's yeah. that's like the that's like the one I'd rather buy more than anything because you throw the silicon tips in peroxide and that's that's clean and rubbing out. Yeah, but. That. It's the only one that's been inside of someone else. Well, oh, I hope I the only one's been inside of someone else's body. But like a full size, mm. full size. Like I don't know how greasy somebody's hair gets, or like if they smoke yeah. in their house. Like that's full size. Really, is kind of the grossest if you think about it on, on a logical level. Um, I but, just don't want anything that's been inside of someone's orifice for any reason. <laughs> oh. It's a hard line. I'm sorry right, that, so, yeah. that not all of us are comfortable with our sexuality, but maybe <laughs> wow. one day, man, may be able to cope Freaking with wow. Okay, so oh. keeping it to new. Yeah, all right. So new, budget, closed back, open back, and in-ear monitor is what we're talking about. And you have uh, 15 seconds. No. Does anybody have a list already? <laughs> I don't have, I don't know enough about IEMs to give you a recommendation on that. Right, so you can skip on that, I guess. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw a wrench into this a little bit and say that I think people should try the HD 200 Pro actually for an actual closed back. It seems like a bizarre. 200 Pro. Yeah, it seems like a bizarre recommendation. It really belongs in the four series. Um, Tile measured the 471i, which as far as I can tell, uses the same driver. And what's interesting was he actually said, I believe in his review, that he dethroned the Cal using that headphone because wow. it had much better harmonic distortion in the bass in particular, uh, which was kind of odd of a recommendation to do. But it's definitely a lot warmer of a sound. Um, if, if, if you're coming from a consumer you know, kind of tuning, people are probably more likely to gravitate to that. Cal's a little bit aggressive, but that depends on the person. So I can't, you know, assume, but really it's, it hasn't been bad for me. I actually bought one of those out of curiosity. I think they're like, I want to say 60 something bucks. And yeah, HD 200 pro is just a four, four series. Like I, I can't say four X X or four X zero because people are going to think it's the high five man, but yeah, so, so, the, <laughs> so that's that. I'm gonna go with that on close. I mean, I like the A900X, I like the Cal, but um, I don't. I wanted to bring that up. Um, and then for open, yeah, it's really hard to pick something other than the Cal. But if I had to, and you really want to get something open, um, I would not say the SHP9500 in case somebody thought that was coming. I would say, actually. I don't even think those are made anymore. No, I, I think right. yeah, yeah. it's the S now, right? I, I don't even know if that's me. Anyway, um, I'm actually going to say that the K240 is fun, and that's going to be really um, controversial <laughs> because oh, yeah. it has a lot of base um, uh, roll off, like a lot of base roll off. And but it's it's an interesting, it's a fun flavor headphone that sometimes I preferred over the K or Q701 while I owned those. Uh, because it's not as not as not quite as drastically colored as those are. 
guess an interesting headphone. So those are the two I'm going to pick just to, you know, be a little different. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Um, I, I would probably jump to for open back something in like the AD 500 or 700 X. Um, and it's not just because I love audio technica. It's because they're, they're, <laughs> They, if you're buying an open back, you're probably looking for in a budget range. I think a lot of people are probably looking for a gaming headset, and it's really hard to beat either one of those for a gaming headset. Especially, I mean, they, they sound good for music, but uh, for for a nice wide sound stage and positioning, the AD500 or AD700X. But now this is gonna we're we're circling back now to where I'm going to get attacked. Uh, for open oh. for open back, I still have a very fond thing for like the SR60 and SR80. They're under oh. hundred dollars. Oh boy! And, and listen, they <laughs> they are not refined. They have issues, but they have a really cool aesthetic. This old school aesthetic, and for like for just engagement, they have a really good way of drawing you into to music so and i've listened to the i've listened to the e version actually so i can say that even with listening to like the 600s or, or other headphones that they still have this drawing in sense to them and the cost supporter pro obviously like under 50 bucks are, are fantastic for iems i really haven't heard much so i don't have anything to say on them all right. Well, we've got the we got one of the hotter takes. I think I may come out with a hotter take myself. But wait, did hot... you next get a close back? I missed that. Oh, close back. Oh, um, frick. Yeah. Shoot. Um. Yeah. Pers personally speaking, I haven't really heard any recently, and the nine ninety X would be mine if you could find them within the hundred dollar range. Other than that, I don't really have anything. Probably go IEMs for close back. If you're looking portable, um, from what I'm reading about, like a lot of different IEMs, that seems to be the way to go. To be honest, um, the M50X are okay. Um, the they're like 160 now, aren't they? Still, are they really? Jesus. Yeah, they're pretty expensive they're, still. They actually M40X hold value maybe. quite well, which is interesting. Yeah, they. Really yeah, are. they're uh, they're 150 on Amazon, and they're like 120 Jeez. used. Uh, but I guess you know it's okay. It, it, I I'd still count that. Maybe you know. Well, so. if we if we count that, then I'm just gonna say the K612 for my open one. That's easy. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't heard. But that. you can get those for new, uh, less than a hundred new sometimes. I've Not if them. you're a real person. Only Europeans. <laughs> one thirty five. <laughs> right now on Amazon. I see the K612. That came down. One thirty five. Yeah. Those are Damn, cheap. Damn, that is a good deal. Mm. So man, what's it gonna oh, okay. be? Well, I mean, it, it depends. Are, are we allowed to go over the $100 limit? Because that changes the answer a lot. Would, would anybody else change their answers if we were to allow up to $150? I would say plus minus $20 would be like, like, like yeah. when, when you're thinking somebody, like the average person who would want a budget headphone, they're usually in the $100 range. Like, a, like that's usually like looking for budget headphones, $100, $80. Yeah, but most people will be able to like stretch a little bit sometimes. Pro of course, like the K612 or something, that's going to be an amp too. So that's like, oh, yeah, that's that's so that, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I think when we're talking budget headphones, like I, I meant to bring this up when we were trying to define it a little bit. Um, I think budget means all inclusive. So I, I think that's yeah. that's a. I think for yeah. me, that's a hard line there. No, uh, like low sensitivity rip. stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Jump, jump it right into your phone or right into your iPod. Or that might disqualify phone. the 240. It's not very easy to run. Uh, even it's, no, it's I, not. I, I didn't yeah, think that they were super bad. Like running off my like, I, I had them at. I had the K240 at the same time. I had like the 8700. Oh, 500. really? Okay. And I never thought that they were actually. To be honest, like, and this might be a hot take, but I thought the 555s were because they have the impedance spike pretty pretty hefty in the in like the 50 hertz region and i never really liked them until i got like a little like i baso amp at mm. the time oh yeah a lot of stuff has right. undefined put impedance that's that's cheap true. and that can really mess with uh i was gonna say if we extended the price to above 100 i would probably pick like 
I was gonna say I would pick like a five seventy nine, then I just looked at it, and apparently they're like still a hundred and like sixty, which is kind of oh, wow. wild. Oh, I couldn't hell. believe that. Yeah, I don't know. That price is going all over the place. In fact, it's more expensive than the five nine nine is right now. It's five. It's one seventy five for the five seventy nine and one sixty three for the five ninety nine in wow. uh, American Amazon right now. It's kind of wild. I did find the OB one though. It's called the Lix Pro OEH ten, and it's sixty bucks. Lix like, Pro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looks just like the same OEM. So I'm pretty sure that was the OB one. Lix Pro. O E H ten. It looks like it to me anyway. <laughs> Amazing so, name. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know what OEM that is. But did you actually get to know. listen to that one, or did you? I've oh. I've never tried the OB one or this though, so okay. I can't tell for for sure if I would change that. Anywho, wow, um, this is tough. <laughs> I think, well, for me, the in ear wreck is like very <laughs> obvious. It's definitely going to be the ninety ish dollar Enemotic. The uh, I think it's the it's not the HF five. It's the MC five now. I think. Oh, or, I've heard that. Do I have that backwards? Oh, are you talking about the Dynamic Eddie? No, 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 not the Dynamic. It's like the cheapest BA, I think. Oh, are okay. You about the are you talking about the kids one? No, no, oh. not the ETY kids. HF5, right then? Yeah. No, that's HF5. discontinued, no? Uh, did they discontinue it? Because I got mine for like. <laughs> I, I got mine for like 60 bucks. I was like, why I is this such the, a good deal? It's because the they're discontinued. The HF5 was discontinued in favor of the ER3. Oh. Uh, uh, that explains why it was so cheap. I was wondering why anyone would buy anything else. Yeah, that's... Wow. I missed no, that that's one. a rip. That's a rip. <laughs> I know the HF5 was a nice one. A nice, nice choice as, apart from the cable. Some people complain about the cable breaking. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty mediocre in that respect. And it's not replaceable, so... All right, well, they have the HF3 now, which, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I'll be frank, I'll, I'll accept any substitution for Metamotic that's not the ETY kids. Like, they all <laughs> seem to be pretty much good, and I'm willing, I'll put, I'll put my money behind pretty much any Etymotic headphone. They just, they do good work. You heard it, Matt doesn't like point, kids. You know. I, it's I, true, I don't like kids. I... Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Ofen, he does like kids. Whoa, <laughs> Mad! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a wrench into that argument because I right. actually bought the MC5, which was not a smart decision. Oh. And uh, it's a, I think that's their dynamic. And wow, it sounds like I, I think that's know, the MK5, 20, the 20 bucks or whatever. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Whatever. The isolator, the one that's real small. So, Matt, yeah, Matt, it's definitely your IM recommendation then is the. Whatever BA Edimodic is below a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. There, that's a good way. Besides to say. the etiquettes. <laughs> well, I, I think that is dynamic, actually. Oh, it might be. Oh. I just know it has high impedance. That's all. No, yeah. it has an inline resistor, actually. Oh. oh. Yeah, that's that. That was their volume control solution. Was just make it, just put a resistor in there. <laughs> um. That's anyway, easiest, easiest way, I guess. Open back. I mean, if if we're being snarky, the cow. If we're not. 100 is real hard. I, I yeah. might actually just say, like, I don't think it's great, but, like, the the HD 518 equivalent, the 559, might actually be one of the better options. I'm not saying it's perfect, but, like, that, that sound isn't terrible. That's true. It, it's better than a lot of them out there. It, I'd be a lot happier saying the 598 equivalent, and I'd well, be a lot I happier mean, still saying. It refurbishes 120 right now. Yeah, I mean, like if you if you can put out the five nine eight that sort of thing, that's pretty good. I you know I said I'd be I if someone said hey I got a hundred bucks I want open back I'd say save up fifty more bucks and get a K six twelve or a DT eight eighty. But yeah. you know if you got it you gotta yeah. And I think if that if you got it then the the you know the five eighteen equivalent is pretty good. So For I closed back the hot take. I would actually say probably try the Sony. I'm six, actually the, the MDRV six. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> I, I would say you did that M40X, just to bait. You. I would say the M40X if I'd actually heard it based on reviews, but I'm not going to recommend something I've never. I heard. I used I to really been. that thing. It was really a lot more even than the M50X sounding. It was surprising, but yeah. it's still got the same issues with soundstage and comfort and whatever. And the build quality is not quite as good. 
And it doesn't come with a short cable in the box, which really confuses me. Um, yeah. But other than that, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, and I guess I got to gotta say mine. Um, and you got to have a hot take, too. We all had a hot take. <laughs> well, my, my hot take is that the cow is a close back, maybe. Okay, no, it's banned. No, no, Veto. no, you can't do that. <laughs> it, it technically has a closed back. Veto. The sides are open. You know, the back is closed, so by definition, it is a closed back headphone. Can we get a can we get a group support for Vito uh, here? I Vito. I, I, yep. That leaks more sound than probably my eighty seven hundreds. Hyperbole, obviously, but if they no, hear, but it's like open back. But yeah, I we're throwing that one out. I know. Throwing, I mean, throwing, it, uh, out. really? Well, yeah, I mean, it's the thing. Is, when people say closed back, they don't mean the technical acoustic principle. They mean, does it leak the noise? <laughs> That's yeah. what the consumer cares about, and it does leak the noise. But who cares? You still can still wear that in public. Oh, God. Imagine that on the bus. You'd be deaf by the first stop. Well, well you know what? I've, I've brought my port pros out in public many times. Yeah, right. So I was I was gonna say I was gonna say cow for close back, but if it, if I can't say cow for close back, then the only other close back headphone below a hundred dollars that I can say that I've listened to and that I don't completely dislike is probably the ADH M four TX as well. Okay. Maybe maybe the, oh man, I'm trying to think if I'm not forgetting anything that I listened to. Uh yeah, I, w I was gonna say cow, but uh, you guys say cow is not close, so I can't say cow. Then I gotta say M40X, I guess. Um, but if if I have to recommend M40X, I would recommend going with IMs over closed back headphones instead. So I would recommend the GR7 myself for uh, GR7 IM. isn't that cheap. If yeah. GR7 was that cheap, I'd have wrecked yeah. it. You can get it for 100, 100 bucks. You cannot get it for hundred bucks new. No, not new. Not new. You can. It goes on sale regularly, be low hundred bucks. Does it? Can yeah. you link it to me when it does next, please? Yeah, I can. I've only uh, ever seen it like one thirty. Yeah, but that's a detachable cable one, no? Uh, yeah, but I just haven't seen the other ones. Yeah, like, this is crazy. I'm looking at like Camel, Camel, cheap. Camel, which like tracks all the the pricing and. Oh no, we're dude. Five. Has been. No, guys, you don't understand. We're already wrecked. He he he's played us like a damn fiddle, because. Wait, what? What's Where's that? Right? Wait, wait, what? It was a setup. You manipulated this. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just don't believe me. You can hate us. All right, so so we all do like the cow. That's, I, that's a we, given. We, so so yeah. definitely the cow is a recommendation, whether you want a closed or an open back. You know, it, you got to keep good. in mind it leaks. It's not built the greatest. Uh, it's got a non-detachable cable that's not the greatest, and it's quite short. Saying um, it's not built the greatest is kind of charitable. It's made out of balsa wood and hope. <laughs> well, uh, but. You know, mine hasn't broken yet, and it sounds very, very good, especially if you can get it for 50 bucks, which, uh, you know, it oftentimes goes on sale for. Um, True. And, you know, I, I, I was going to say cow for my close pack, but it's not considered close pack, so I say M40X, but then I say get the GR7 over the M40X if you want something with isolation that's portable. And for open bag, you know, it's tough. As the other said, there's really kind of a void of what I say, presents a good value at $100 for an open back headphone. There's like a little bit above that you can get um, for new the HD 558 or 598 equivalents from Sennheiser uh, or the K612 if you have a little higher output device um, or use stuff like a used HD 6SX, which is an amazing headphone. Um, and below that, you can get cheaper open backs like, uh, you know, would you guys consider the KSC 75s as an open bag? Yeah, or, of course. Oh, yeah. So there we go. I prefer those over the Porter Pros, and I think they sound really, really good for the yeah, price. Yeah, big agree there. And uh, you get a good warranty as well, if you're into that. Um, well, it's a nominally good warranty. It's kind of hard to justify the cost of shipping. True, true. I know people who own three KSC 75s <laughs> and wait until they're all broken to ship them back. That's very <laughs> economical. But you can get you can do that because you can get three KC seventy fives if you shop right for less than a hundred bucks. 
You can get three guys if you shop right. You can get that for like forty five bucks or less. Well, it's a it's a crazy value. There you go. Um, so that's that's definitely my uh, recommendation for an open back budget headphone because I I'm gonna say get get something really cheap that presents a good value or save up a little more and get something nicer if you're gonna go open back because it's for home listening and proper listening anyway. So yeah, those are my choices. I think I think the one thing that we all kind of had trouble with as as um, hobbyists who've been in the hobby for a while and who have heard three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar headphones. I two thousand, four thousand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think I think the one thing is that we all kind of had a hard time really finding headphones that we'd really put our opinions behind in. I wonder if that says something about us or if that says something about <laughs> <laughs> about how the hobbies may be changed. Um, because like the SR, like the Grados used to be highly recommended. Um, there, you, I feel true. like there, was, there used to be maybe a, a larger um, selection of headphones under $100 or maybe it just felt that way because we didn't have the knowledge. It's uh, something that I've been thinking about for the past like 15 minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it's been. Yeah, and, and you know, choices. Your choices will also depend on what what stuff you value about headphones. There's, I know a lot of a great deal of people that value comfort above everything else, and there's yep. loads of headphones that they won't even consider because they don't feel comfortable. They don't feel nice on their head, mm -hmm. and you know, they they if if they want a budget headphone, they will just get whatever they find most comfortable. Or there's other people that will look for something that's aesthetically pleasing to wear, you know? If they're gonna wear it outside, they want something that looks nice. And mm -hmm. they, they won't consider anything that looks ugly. And, and if I recommend them something like the A900X or something, they will laugh at me. And, oh, what uh, are you saying about the how the A900X looks? Listen, I, am oh, charming with that. I am over here triggered. I, <laughs> I am absolutely, oh gosh. <laughs> Maximum trigger on Kleenex on that one. <laughs> Dude, I look like an idiot at the office, I swear, trying to wear the A900X. I'm sorry. I agree with these guys. <laughs> you just don't have the courage to rock it. <laughs> well, he does it, clearly. I do it anyway, but it still looks crazy. <laughs> I did I did take a picture of a guy wearing an MDR Z7 outside. Wow, bully. Whoa. <laughs> I never posted it. Well, now you're but now you're talking about it behind his back. <laughs> how's that bullying, though? Oh wow! Like how's how's cyber bullying even real? Like just walk away <laughs> right from the screen. Open twenty nineteen. How is cyber bullying real? Classic Tyler quote. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. So I, uh, I left out the turn, turn off your TV. Oh, <laughs> turn off your monitor. Yeah, I left out the the, the one thing you can't say. But everything else, it's kind of Listen. paraphrased it well. <laughs> so, Ray Kenix, I actually think that there's better use, like better cheap options than there used to be. But like, I think we've gotten a lot more demanding as a subculture than once we were. Mm. There's a lot of stuff that used to be popular that I think has faded, just as people have been like, you know what, I got better uses for my money. You know, it's not think... even just because of new stuff, but like, you know. Nowadays, we just casually say, oh, don't do that. Just get a KSC 75. I think I that like, that sort of harshness is new. I feel yeah. like it may be good. Part of it has also changed uh, because of um, today's music preferences. I think um, a good bass response has become a lot more important than it used to be. You know, that, a deep bass and extension mm -hmm. is not something that um, is that, or is that, is that like, um, how do I say core to um, listening to rock music, maybe or older pop music? I see what you mean. We don't I have mean, to. Can we can we actually lump in Olive's research in here a little bit as well? I mean, the av yeah. it seems like the average user preference is uh, definitely shifted away from the classic um, tuning that these high end headphone manufacturers have been using for a long time before that. So. That well, to be fair, before all, if we don't know if they maybe they always preferred this and just nobody knew. Yeah, that that's another problem. Like I've, I don't know where I read this, but I thought that uh, the Sennheiser engineers had kind of discovered 
early on. You know, when the back when the issues six hundred and six fifty were always considered veiled, that was really just Sennheiser realizing, hey, people don't some people don't want like DT eighty bright. And uh, apparently people kind of tend to prefer the warmer sound than, than the than diffuse field sometimes. So they went and did that, and that experiment seems to have worked out well for them. So that's not research they posted, but there's a lot of internal knowledge uh, at companies that, that comes from through that. So True. I always kind of wish that like more companies would, you know, like as Harmon has just published publicly the studies yeah. they've done internally to guide their targets. Because some of them, like uh, you know Bayer, you know, they obviously Whoa. have a target. Like what, what happened there? What did you guys hear that, or was that just what, me? Hear what? Never mind. No, it's a lot sound. Bayer. I thought, has I, thought been... I was just worried about. I thought it was just a hot take somehow. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe. I think Whoa, Bayer, Bayer has, has research because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. How did DT nine ninety happen? That's that's actually kind of a question. I most preferred open headphone and olives test of late. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, it was the it was the highest scorer, I believe. <laughs> Who did they get to test with? Wow, that's bizarre. that was. Um, I think it was the most popular among uh, among like inexperienced listeners, but also okay. pretty popular in the blind test with the experienced listeners. Wow, that's I don't trust wow. this panel anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but Bayer has an interesting FAQ page, actually. It, it's a little tough to find. You gotta dig a little bit on their site, but if you find it, they actually they're, they're one of the questions is what is a diffuse field uh, compensated headphone or something like that. And they talk about how they have a a real echo chamber just for that. So they seem to have some kind of idea of what you know target they're going for, which is clearly that. Yeah, and the same with Sennheiser. They have uh, they have some good papers in the AES actually about how they got sort of a synthetic diffuse field using an anechoic chamber and a bunch of speakers at careful positions. Oh wow, I've never heard of that. That's really interesting. Jeez, it's like I just wish that we could crack open all of the vaults of knowledge. Like you know, I'm not saying yeah. just put it into the commons. Just put it into the AES. <laughs> That's what it's there for. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They just want to keep them as trade secrets, apparently. That's shame. what is kind of yeah. It's 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 unfortunate. So, where do you guys see budget headphones going or earphones going? Then, like, um, do you think China? China? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, I you know what I forgot. I was going to gonna bring, bring up, up the Ginkros. There's they're really uh, they're really popular now. And they're so like earbuds. Deep. Yeah, they are earbuds though, and not in-ear monitors. But well, um, I mean, if you want to get into in-ear monitor or earbuds, um, obviously there's only one way to buy, uh, only one thing to buy. No, we can't do this. I can't go back to 2016. Oh, no. The Baldor E100. That's it. Oh no, I'm having flashbacks. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my pair. Actually, I bought a pair for like four dollars or something. Oh man, I think I demoed them too. I think it. What, what was the deal with those? They were actually really good, but like they were decent. They, they were unbelievably wear uncomfortable. Wear them they like were. They're an okay earbud, and like when you actually seal them with your canal, they become kind of a weird pseudo IEM. And that one <laughs> dude did it and convinced people it was a good idea. <laughs> I think that's somebody's username still on yeah, Reddit. Oh yeah, country. he's a prolific shit poster. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I, I definitely see a lot of uh, a lot of Chinese brands continuing to just just flood the market, and I guess the audiophiles will pick out the best of them as they come. Incro is one of the latest ones. It's funny. I was talking to to Vlad from The Verge, and he ended up buying a pair of the Incro X6s and was so shocked that he posted a whole article reviewing them. So I guess there's some truth in, in that budget stuff coming to light now. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not too fond of the modern trend for, you know, <laughs> earbuds, but it's definitely, if if there's going to be a, you know, a, a bang for buck product, it's probably going to come out of China these days or because... Yeah. yeah, and and I I would say going forward, probably IEMs are probably gonna get your best bang for the buck. Um, is is kind of what it seems to to be. You know, you're not gonna get a closed back headphone, but like at, at a fifty dollar price, better than a fifty dollar IEM. I've never seen it in my 
10 years in the hobby. I've never once seen a, clo- a pure closed back IEM you'd walk around town with that had better sound quality than an, any IEM of the same price or even $10 cheaper. You mean a, a closed back headphone that's better than that? <laughs> yeah. like, like a closed back that truly isolates. I've never yeah. seen it. You said you said IEM twice. Yeah, you said IEM the... twice. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. and we were all very confused. <laughs> so an IEM of the same price to a, an actually isolating um, full size. I've never seen a full size headphone be the better better choice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely. There's just like so many flawed close backs <clears throat> to begin with. It's something that have we talked about that close play point? back it's just so hard yeah i feel I like we touched we've, on mentioned that before. we've mentioned it before but it's yeah. just it's it always surprises me every time someone asks me for headphones and i'm like oh you probably want normal person headphones because you're a normal human and i'm like <laughs> oh dang there's not actually that many there's and, not and that then, many options yeah i interest you in some beats solo twos yeah and then mad's like no not me i'm not a normal human <laughs> i mean like he's yeah. not even human right He's a robot. Yeah, he's a robot. He's listen. I used to be human, (laughs) but then that's definitely my favorite Zuckerberg moment. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'm still am, but (laughs) 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 have you seen those like those videos where they um where they um. Thank you for listening to the Headphone Dialogue. If you enjoyed this episode, you can like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to discuss the topics from this video and others, you can join our Discord server by clicking the link in the description box below.